Hello everyone, welcome to a City Skylines mod tutorial of Traffic Manager President Edition. This is version 1.10.5. As far as I know, this is the most recent version of the mod as of January 14th, 2018. It does work with all of the DLCs, including the newest one, Green Cities. So I was doing some searching a couple weeks ago to try and figure out exactly how to use a couple different parts of this mod and I couldn't really find any kind of instructional video that was out there. There's the instructional website which comes with the mod which is really good and it was really helpful but I'm more of a visual person and I really like to see how something works and then I can take that and implement it in what I do. And that's the reason for this video. I want to show you guys everything that I've learned about this mod and share the knowledge. Here shortly, I'm going to put up the times for the various information that I'm going to be covering in this video for the mod. This way, if there's something specific that you want to see, you can skip ahead. Or, if you're feeling a little adventurous and need more information about the entire mod itself, go ahead and stick around and watch the entire video. If you have any feedback at all, please put it down in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you want to see more videos of mine, go ahead and subscribe today. Now for the first part of this mod, I'm going to be covering everything that's in the options menu. You've got the general tab, the gameplay tab, policies and restrictions, overlays, and maintenance. So either you're at the beginning part of the menu or you can go into the options menu under the pause menu and then you want to go over to your mod settings and select traffic manager president edition. And then here's all the tabs that I had just talked about earlier. So the first tab is your general tab. Change your language, you can actually go in and enable tutorial messages if you want to um, and you can lock your main menu position and your button. Um, what this does is that this will actually allow you to, um, right now, I don't have it locked, so I can move this thing around, right? I can put it down here if I want, I can put it up here, put it over there with this stuff. Regardless of where you put it, though, um, the menu, the options for it will still always come up over here. But you could also move this around as well. You can move it down here if you want, you can put it up there. However, wherever you want to put it, you can put it there. I usually typically prefer to leave mine there. And then once you do that, you can go into that option part of it and then go ahead and lock it down. I don't necessarily lock it down because I don't have a tendency of moving it, so I just leave it where it is. Uh, the simulation part of it, you know, just as it is, you know, your accuracy, uh, you can set it to be very high for the performance of everything. Um, and then the activated features piece of it, so all 12 features that are right here, you can actually disable some of those if you don't want to use all of them. So if I take off, say, priority signs and time traffic lights, then when I go into here, you can see that that information is now gone. Granted, I prefer to keep everything in there anyway because I like to use it all. Alright, so the next thing that I want to get into is I want to get into the gameplay tab. So the gameplay tab has a lot to do with the vehicle behavior all throughout the entire game. Now, obviously the first part of this is reckless driving. So you can actually enable a little bit more <laughs> reckless driving. I love this one, Path of Evil, that's great. Um, I, I, this is a new tab for me. I actually just came across this not too long ago. Honestly, had no idea a lot of this stuff existed. Um, but I think it would be really neat to get into, uh, and I think it would help a lot of games out a lot. Uh, but you can go in and you can change the, uh, re you can have realistic speeds, you can, um, the road conditions have a lot bigger impact on vehicle speed, and you can disable despawning if you want to. I don't know if I really wanted to ever do that, but, I mean, that's just me. The next part of this is the Advanced Vehicle AI. Basically, what the Advanced Vehicle AI does is that it improves the overall road usage it spreads traffic throughout and it prevents unnecessarily unnecessary lane changes. Pardon my talking. Um, with that, you can actually do the dynamic lane selection. And with that paired with the advanced AI, the dynamic lane 
really, I mean, it's, it's kind of complicated to shorten up, but it really helps the vehicle if it's in the leftmost lane figure out where it needs to go a lot sooner and just changes laying segments one at a time rather than what we see a lot of in a vehicle going from the leftmost lane over to the rightmost lane. Um, I typically take care of that with uh, lane connections, uh, which I will cover here in a little while. Um, I will probably look a little bit more into this and see what kind of an impact that will have in some of my other saves that I have. Um, probably going to help out the game a lot. Now, the last part of this is parking AI. The parking AI, you can enable it for more realistic parking. So a lot of times we see the despawning happening of people and their uh, vehicles. So they'll get out of their vehicle and pocket the vehicle and then walk to their destination. This will actually give them a real, more realistic uh, parking section. So if you have something like uh, a transport hub or an airport or something like that and you have a lot of parking lots that are in there that have parking spaces uh, and you've downloaded some of those assets or created some of those assets then the sims are going to be more likely to use that parking lot or park uh, rather than stopping somewhere and despawning their vehicle again something i haven't played around with yet but i think it would be really really interesting to see and some of you that i've seen on youtube that have these vast parking lots near airports and stuff like that if you don't have that dis or if you don't have that enabled i would be really curious to see if you enable that how those parking lots would then fill up All right, so the next spot that I want to take a look at is policies and restrictions. This, a lot of this is really pretty much simple and straightforward. You know, this will allow this, the restrictions to happen across the entire game rather than you picking and choosing those certain restrictions in certain areas. Um, for instance, you know, having heavy vehicles prefer the outer lanes on the highway. You know, you might want that, or depending on how you have your highway system set up, you may not want that throughout the entire game, but just on specific lanes themselves, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. So all of this has a lot more in-depth information on the website. Again, I'll put that in the description down below. But they're all pretty much straightforward. You know, vehicles going straight on may change lanes at junctions. I really wouldn't want that. I want you to go straight into the lane that you want. Um, vehicles doing U-turns, all the junction information that's in there, you can either change per junction or you can just do it through the game itself. I actually really like this one here. So in case of emergency, evacuation buses may ignore all traffic rules. That would actually probably be a really good idea to have activated if you have uh, natural disasters going on in your city. Now this next one has to do with overlays. When it comes to the overlays, it's actually, it's pretty simple. Um, so if you have, say, speed limits on, what that's gonna do is that is going to, when you activate Traffic Manager, it's going to put speed limits on every single road that's in here. Granted, when you zoom out some, it's not gonna be there anymore. But <coughs> when you open the mod, it will automatically default to having that on there. Or you can say, take that off. And if you want to see all of your lane connections um, and your node segments, then you can do that. And there you go. Lanes, nodes, all of that kind of stuff. Everything that's in there. Granted, for me, it's not really something that I'd really want to see. Maybe the speed limits, um, possibly vehicle restrictions. I think vehicle restrictions might be good, but again, you have to be, you know, you have to be zoomed in if you have any. Granted, I don't have any, so nothing's going to pop up. And then the last part of this is the maintenance tab. Really simple, really easy. It basically resets everything back to where it needs to go. It's that simple. So that's all I really have for the uh, options tab. Again, there is a website down in the description below. Uh, if you feel free to want to visit that website, again, a lot of information that's on there, way too much information for me to explain in one video. So go ahead and check that out. All right. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the actual in-game application here, or, you know, the little button that you click on, and we're going to go over all 12 of these little buttons. 
Now, the order that I'm going to go into is going to be switch traffic lights, disable despawn, clear traffic, parking restrictions, vehicle restrictions, speed limits, junction restrictions, change lane arrows, lane connector, add priority signs, manual traffic lights, and time traffic lights. Now, the reason why I'm going to go in that order is because some of these are really, like I said before, some of these are really simple. Some of them are a lot more in-depth and complicated. So, you know, we'll just go from there. All right, so for the next part of this tutorial, I want to go through all of the in-game application stuff. Uh, so we've got switch traffic lights, add priority signs, lane connector, change lane arrows, disable despawn, clear traffic, parking restrictions, vehicle restrictions, speed limits, junction restrictions, manual traffic lights, and time traffic lights. So the first one that I want to cover has to do with traffic lights. Now, this is something that was built into Traffic Manager a long time ago when we didn't have this option in the vanilla game. But if you go into the info view and go down to traffic routes and over to junctions, you actually have the option to go ahead and toggle traffic lights and toggle stop signs. So we could actually just turn this off and then add stop signs over here if we wanted to. But if you want, you can actually leave that alone and then use this to go ahead and switch the traffic lights on and off. Now, with the mod itself, that doesn't allow you to change any type of signs, but that goes into the next part of it. So then the next part of it, after you've taken the traffic lights off of there, you can go ahead and click on add priority signs. So when you go into add priority signs, you have a couple different options. So you can make these priority and then have these guys yield. So your avenue has priority over traffic and then the traffic coming onto or across the avenue has to yield to the in oncoming traffic. Or you can actually have them stop at this right here at this intersection and then if they're good to go they will go ahead and go now this also works really well when it comes to using roundabouts a roundabout like I have set up here then your traffic is going to go onto the roundabout and go into the roundabout now if you don't have any type of priority signs or anything like that set up then traffic is just going to be completely mushed together so what you can do is you can then make that priority and that yield. So like all roundabouts, any traffic going into the roundabout has to yield to any traffic that is already in the roundabout. And that should help when it comes to getting traffic to flow in and out of a roundabout a little bit more easily. Now, I don't have any roundabouts in this current city, but it does work really well to have this application put into place. Now, the next thing that I want to cover is when it comes to the lane connector, the lane connector being this up here. So when you click on the lane connector, it gives you all of these different nodes. So when you click on that node, it's going to give you the options for these lanes right here. Now, with these lanes, you can choose, click on that, and then you can choose, do I want it to go to just that lane? Or can I want it to go to two different lanes? If I didn't want it to go to that lane, let me just click it again and it takes it off of there. So like for here, I can have that go to there and then this can actually go this way, have it merge over and then that gives way for these. So this guy, if you have him turning right, he's going to choose any one of these three lanes, which you kind of really don't want. You want him to go into the rightmost lane so that he's not blocking traffic that's coming over. And then same with this one, you can have them go to that one. This really isn't the best example uh, because there's two lanes going into a three lane road. So let's take a look at something else that I have. So this right here is actually a really good example for what should not be happening. <laughs> um, so in order to correct this, what I can do is by selecting that lane connector, I have two lanes here and I have two lanes here and all four lanes are trying to go into the same lane because they all want to go over to the right. But what I can do is I can make sure that this lane only goes to there, this lane only goes to there, 
this lane will go over to there, and then this lane will go over to there. Now, as you can see, that helps traffic kind of merge a little bit more smoothly onto this highway. So traffic is now starting to move. The problem now is that you have a car in the left lane here, or this left middle lane, trying to get all the way over to the right lane. This you can either fix yourself or you can go into um, one of those gameplay options that I had mentioned earlier in this tutorial. But what I like to do is I like to give the option of changing these lanes and letting them only merge one lane at a time. So that one can then go there and then this one can go there or there. Which is pretty simple. So it's allowing these vehicles to merge over to this lane here and then they're going to come down to this next node in a sense and merge over to the right now this is another one of those where you kind of have to micromanage a little bit of this traffic and then make sure that everything is going smoothly now the next piece of this is this lane right here now you have one dedicated going to the right and then one going to the right and going straight on you can actually fix that yourself <coughs> pardon me and you could either fix it by doing this. You can do it this way. Or if you want to make it simpler, since you may not have a whole lot of traffic coming down this road, you could downgrade that highway to two lanes. And then that way, your lane connections, which disappear once you do that, it still leaves the two that went over to the right, but it d makes the two that you went straight on disappear. Now, the other thing that we could do with this if we really wanted to is we can actually just change the lane arrows instead of doing the lane connector. What the lane connector really does is the lane connector tells it to go to a specific lane as it's turning. Now, if we were to go through and just take this off of there, and if we use just the lane arrows, then this will allow us to really keep, I mean, it, it keeps like that one, it'll go straight and this one, it'll go to the right, but these cars can actually go to the right and then switch lanes as they're turning if they wanted to. I really wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, that's probably not the best example. Um, let's find another one. Okay, so here we have a three lane highway and then going onto, there's two lanes going onto the highway, sorry, a three lane um, <laughs> avenue and it's going onto a two lane highway. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and let's change the lane arrows here because we have one that is dedicated left, one that goes to the left and straight, and then one that goes straight. So what if I just take that lane connector off of there, and then what that's gonna do is the traffic is going to be able to turn left, but it can choose either lane it wants to go to. So you can see how that bus just kind of went right over to the right. Uh, let's see if I, I can get another one of these guys to do it. But instead of staying in this left lane as they're turning, they will turn and go into this lane here, which is something that we really don't want to happen, which is why I prefer using the lane connector over the, um, is that right? Yeah, the lane connector over the lane change or the change lane arrows. I don't usually use that one too much. All right, now the next two are pretty basic, simple, straightforward, not really a whole lot of explanation that we need to go into with that. And that's disable despawn. So this basically doesn't allow despawning in the game. So a vehicle has to go to where it needs to go and then it goes away or it has to find somewhere to park. I don't particularly like this one. I like the despawning that happens. So I kind of keep that on here. And then the next one is clear traffic. This one is, I mean, you can do this one early, early in the game, um, but you don't want to do it when you have over I don't know, probably over 50,000 people maybe, because what this does is it clears all of the traffic in the game and then everything has to respawn. All of your emergency vehicles, all of your buses, everything will have to respawn and it can create a traffic nightmare. 
All right, the next one that I want to look at is I want to look at parking restrictions. So when you have certain roads, those roads will allow parking on the sides of them. But sometimes you want that road itself, but you don't want people to park on them. You want to keep the road as clear as possible. So say, for instance, right here, we have, you know, all of this commercial area that's down here. But we want to encourage people to use a parking lot rather than parking on the street. So what we're going to do is we'll go here into parking restrictions. And then we can just toggle it and make people not park on there. I don't want any parking on there. None whatsoever. And then I can actually do that throughout this entire segment if I wanted to. Now, this will only go, <coughs> pardon me, um, in between each segment. So there really isn't much else that you can do with that. But what you can do is if you have, say right here, you've got two segments linked together in between two roads, you can actually shift and left click and that takes it off of both of those and shift and left click and it takes it off both of those. Not holding shift will only allow it on this part but not this part. Or you can shift and click again and it'll take it off both of them. So shift left click does it for the entire segment in between each road or you can single click up to you however you want to do it now shift left click won't use or won't use won't work for over here because there's a road segment in between each of these now if I were to take out say uh, that, 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 come on if I were to take out this intersection right here and that makes that full you know there's two segments but it's a full stretch of road then you go into here and then shift left click takes it off of there or it'll put it on there however you want to do it all right, now the same thing goes hand in hand when it comes to the vehicle restrictions. So on vehicle restrictions, say we want to take a look at this highway right here. So we actually have all of these different options for each lane, right? So we have cars, buses, taxis, uh, heavy trucks, uh, garbage trucks, and emergency vehicles. So you can do a couple different things with this. You can choose just that one segment itself or you can, again, shift, click, and as you see, it changes it for that entire segment. Now, for something like highways, it'll go from the junction right here all the way up to the next junction that I have right here. So it's a pretty good stretch of road that's right there, especially if I have a whole heck of a lot of traffic like I do right here. So that's going to say there can be no cars in the leftmost lane. They have to use these three lanes. Or what you can do is if you go through and you want to figure out, okay, well, on this section of road, I want, uh, let's see, no taxis, no buses, and no heavy trucks. And you did it just for that one, but you're like, oh, crap, I need that throughout this entire thing. Since you have this one already selected, you can click on apply vehicle restrictions to all road segments between the two junctions. So then that automatically puts it down from this junction down to this junction once you've made your decision. Either way, I mean, it, it all works, you know. And then if I want to just take it off of there, I can shift and left click and it takes it off the entire thing. Or if I'm not sure what I want to do yet, I can just click on that one section and be like, okay, yeah, that's what I want to do. Let's go ahead and put it back onto all of them. And then you can, you have other options. You can ban all vehicles, allow all vehicles, however you want to do it. You know, you have the option to do that. Now, in the options menu, you have more general type things that you can do for the entire game itself. Um, but this way, this allows you to kind of restrict vehicles in certain segments of your city rather than throughout the entire game itself. The other thing that I wanted to look at when it came to vehicle restrictions as well is when you click on vehicle restrictions and select the railroad track, you can actually select or deselect which side of the track or which track will use either uh, passengers or cargo. So if you have a huge train network, then you can go ahead and say, 
uh, this section of road, I don't, or rail, I don't want uh, cargo trains to use this at all. I just want it to be passenger only. Um, granted, you have to make sure that you've got, um, you know, an ample network set up for all of those trains to go through, but you can go ahead and make sure that you deselect that. Or again, if I want, um, if I don't want uh, passenger trains using this, I want it to be cargo only, then it will be cargo only that uses it. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and get into speed limits. So on the speed limits option here, there are, I mean, the speed limits go range anywhere from 10 to unlimited. <laughs> okay, the, the unlimited, I don't know how I feel about that, but it is what it is. With this part of it, the thing about it is that the vehicles, most of them, the maximum speed is 100 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. I'm not entirely sure which one it is in here, but we'll just say 100. Um, in order to make it go 130, I mean, the 110 to 130 is more for like trains and rail and uh, and stuff like that, not for the cars itself. But what you can do is if you get the little mod that's advanced vehicle options, you can go in and um, edit that maximum speed for a vehicle as well to like say 130. Okay, it is kilometers per hour. I stand corrected. <coughs> so anyway, you can actually edit that to 130 and uh, yeah. It's a little tedious and time consuming to go in and change every single vehicle that is in the game. Um, but that would help get your highway speeds up to 130. Or you could maybe go up to 150 and put an unlimited one that's on here as well. So anyway, getting into changing the speed limits. So say I want to kind of slow my speed limit down on this part right here. Okay, I think 100 kilometers an hour might be a little too fast. So if I want to go, let's change it to 90. Now, if I just click on one of them, that'll just change one part of it. But if I shift and left click, it changes, as you can see here, the entire segment. Maybe I want to go back to 100, so I'll shift left click again, changes that entire segment back to 100. Now, this can be useful and very beneficial. Um, say you want to have a certain road that you don't like it being, you know, 40 miles an hour. Say you've got, let's see. Okay, let, let's use the avenue like this as an example. So say you think 50 miles an hour might be too slow for this avenue. Well, what you can do is you can actually go into uh, the default speed limits and you can actually change the entire speed limit for the road for the entire game and for as long as you're playing it. This is an option that I just figured out not too long ago. You guys probably know that it's there, but if you didn't, here you go. Here's something new for you. So I'm going through and I'm trying to find where is my road segment. Now, the other good thing about this too is that I have Network Extensions 2 downloaded. It's another mod uh, that has more road options and all of those roads are in here as well. So it incorporates everything with the vanilla game and everything with that mod that I downloaded. So here's the road that I'm looking for. Medium road with decorative trees down the middle, okay? And it's 50 miles an hour currently. Say I want it to go up to 60 miles an hour. Now, if I just click save, it's gonna save it and anything that I build from now on, it will be 60 miles an hour. If I do save and apply, then it's going to change it directly. So it'll save it, anything that I build from now on will happen and it also applies it to every single road segment that i've built throughout the entire game so far maybe i want to change it back down to 50 then i'll do that save and apply and it changes it back now the unlimited one that's on here that's a little well <laughs> I, I don't know about that i don't know but <clears throat> pardon me the other thing that you can do too let me hang on ah dang it this needs to move Okay, let's close that out. Now, the other thing that you can do when it comes to the speed limits, yeah, you can do it for 50 miles an hour for the entire lane, or you can do show lane speed limits, and then you can choose between each lane. So say on this stretch of highway, I wanna give the leftmost lane, I wanna keep that at 100, and that lane I wanna keep at 100. But then I want to slow down the speed when it comes to 
the rightmost lane. Now, I don't want to do just that section of it. I want to do the entire segment. So I shift and left click, and that changes it for the entire segment going from this junction here all the way down to the next junction down here. And then I want to do the same thing to there. So that really helps out on what I want to do. Now, do we really want the highway to go down in speed? Probably not. <laughs> it's just, you know, an example of what I wanted to show you. Um, it would probably be a little bit more beneficial like when it came to the avenues. So like the leftmost lane, say we want to kick that up to 70, but then we'll leave that one at 50 just to get the throughput of traffic a little bit more. But again, it only does segment by segment, so it's only going to do it for this segment right here. You would have to go into each segment that you have down this way and change it throughout. And you can also go on to your monorail tracks. You can increase that. So say like monorail, I want to go ahead and make it unlimited for the monorail for this section area or for this section right here. But then you have to go in and change it to all of your other sections as well if you want it to be like that. Or again, default speed limit, and then you can go through and find the monorail track that is in here, which I think would be a bit of a pain in the butt, but you can still do it that way if you wanted to. All right, the next thing that I want to take a look at is there's a couple different things that I want to look at when it comes to junction restrictions, okay? So when you go in here and you look at your junction restrictions, I kind of have a problem right here with this area. And you can see how people are despawning right here at the end of um, this highway connection. And then they're walking down this way. I mean, which is great and all, but it's causing a lot of problems with the traffic and the traffic backing up. So what I've figured out is I could actually go in and now it does kind of change the way the AI moves around. But you can go into your junction restrictions, select this, get rid of the um, pedestrian crosswalk, disable that, and believe it or not, that actually, it, well, it should, <laughs> um, at least it has in the past. Actually, what I had to do was I had to go in and get rid of the pedestrian crossings throughout this entire thing here. And what this did was it actually prevented um, the despawning to happen with these people. So now traffic is flowing straight out and they're actually despawning a little bit later on, uh, which is completely fine, or they're finding a couple different spots to despawn as well, which actually helps out in the long run when it comes to this, uh, this city and getting the traffic off of here a lot faster. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show when it came to those junction restrictions, especially when it came to the pedestrian crosswalks, I've actually gone through and I've built up some, some walkways around here because we have our Grand Central Station in a sense right here. So we have a lot of foot traffic and a lot of people. And as we all know, when people try and cross, they will kind of get run over, but it also slows the vehicles down. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into the junction restrictions and I will disable the crosswalks because I have built this stuff up here. And by disabling the crosswalks around here, it forces the people to go up and over using the pathways that I have created. <coughs> Pardon me. And it actually makes it a lot easier for traffic to maneuver around through these intersections right here as well. So as long as you give your sims a place somewhere to go when you restrict the lanes and everything like that, or when you restrict those junctions, then they should be fine. It shouldn't cause too many issues and too many headaches. The other thing with uh, the junction restrictions is you also have... So you can allow traffic to go, you know, into here. So like, you know, light turns red, but they're still going. You know, you can allow them to do that. You can allow them to block the intersection um, while they're trying to get across. Or if you don't allow them to block the intersection, then they won't block it and it'll allow for more traffic to move through. 
Same with U-turns and same with uh, being able to change lanes. The change lanes uh, in the intersection, I don't like at all. All right, now the last piece of this that I want to get into are the traffic lights. First is the manual traffic lights. Manual traffic lights, I mean, you pretty much, when you select the node, it stops all traffic from happening on the light itself. Now, you can select which one you want to go through, just to kind of let that throughput happen. And then your little counter will start going on how long it's been going through and then how long these guys have been stopped. And then I can disable that one and then enable that one. So that one's now disabled for that long. It's been enabled for that long. Now, I don't recommend doing a whole lot of the manual traffic lights just because you got to sit here and you got to watch it, wait for it to happen. And it's very tedious and time consuming. And I have other things that I need to do with this. But I mean, it can help if you want to try and get traffic cleared out of here pretty quickly. Let's move on to timed traffic lights now, shall we? So timed traffic lights is something that it took me a little bit to figure out, but <coughs> pardon me. But once you have figured it out, it's actually pretty simple and pretty easy to do. So on this section right here, as you can see, I have people trying to go straight through and turn left at the same time, which doesn't really work out too well. And then you have other people that are trying to, you know, they, they need to turn right, but they stop because you have, you know, this traffic coming through, but they're not really, they don't need to stop. So the first thing that I want to do is we're going to go into, you know, what we learned about before is I'm going to change, I'm going to have this lane be a right turn only lane. And then this lane, I'm going to allow to choose the lane that it wants to go into. Now you can see we have a problem here with left turns and um, people trying to go straight through. And then we have the right turn only lane that is stopped even though there's no traffic coming on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the time traffic light. I'm going to select the node. And then I'm going to set up a time traffic light. Now, I'm going to add a step. So my first step that I want to do, and this is where it gets a little like, whoa, hold on a second. But this is what I want to do. So you have your minimum time and your maximum time. So minimum time, obviously, how many seconds do you want to let the light stay green? Okay. And then how many seconds, what's the maximum amount of time until the light needs to change? So the first spot that I want to look at is when it comes to people going off of here. Okay. So when I go and I click on this, this takes care of the entire section. Okay, it only gives me a green, it gives me a green light for everything. But over here on this one, even though the, that one's going left and this one's going right, I still want these people to go to the right. But if I turn that green, it's going to make everyone go. So I want to go over to change mode and I want to have going straight on red and then have a green light for those that are turning right. See how that works? Love it, huh? Now, I want a minimum of, say, I don't know, let's say five seconds. Yeah, let's do five seconds and then a maximum of 10 seconds. Now, the flow ratio, <coughs> this is where it gets a little complicated. If you want to go in and try and, you know, figure this out yourself, you're more than welcome to. Me, personally, I let the computer do what it needs to do. Um... So when I do the default, it actually looks at the traffic that is coming off of here and it says, okay, the minimum I'm going to stay green is five seconds. If there's still traffic coming off of here, the light will recognize basically the sensitivity of, you know, how much more traffic needs to come off of here. If it reaches a certain point, then it'll stay green. But if it dips down to either nothing or whatever, if it dips down below a certain point, and I'll show you that here in a minute, um, then it will turn itself red and then move on to the next section. 
I need to quit trying to move <laughs> while I'm typing as well. So anyway, so that's what we're going to do for that. So a minimum time of five seconds, a maximum of 10 seconds. And then we'll go ahead and add that one on there. That's the first step. Now, the next step that we're going to do, you have to go in and make sure that you say, OK, well, that the next step, I'm going to have that turn red. I'm going to allow. And then that right turn is going to turn red. I'm going to change this mode over here. Now, I only have two sections. I have straight and I have left. So I'm going to allow the left lane to go ahead and turn. And since there isn't any traffic that's going to be turning left going this way, then I'm going to go ahead and allow them to go straight forward. Again, I think I think five and ten is going to be is going to be well for right there. I think that'll work. So we'll go ahead and add that on there. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, the next step that I want to do is I'm going to stop the left lane from turning. But then I'm going to allow this lane to go straight on and then that lane to go straight on. So my traffic that's going to be turning left will stop and then everything else can go forward. And that's going to prevent people from turning left while traffic is going straight on. Now, this I'm actually going to allow to go a little bit longer because you can see there's there's a little bit of a tailback happening back here of traffic, right? Traffic is not getting out of here very quickly. So then what I can do is let's do the minimum time for this at 15 seconds and then the maximum of 20 seconds. And then we'll add that on as well. Now, let's go ahead and hit start and then we'll play the game. So as you can see, traffic is coming off of here. Granted, it's stopping because it can't go any further. The next section is going. This is now going. And it's if you look at the minimum state here, Actually, let me slow the game down just a tad. So since traffic is still flowing, it actually kept the light green. So same with here. Traffic wasn't flowing really all that well. There wasn't a big rate for it, so it went ahead and changed it to red. So that's kind of how the time traffic light works with just a single piece of it. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at with time traffic lights is going to be um, selecting more than one section. So when we go into the time traffic light, you can see there's a play button here showing that there's already a time traffic light in this node. So first we want to stop it and then let's go ahead and remove it because we're going to have to add another one onto here. And this is where it gets, yeah, let's let's say a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to select this node and then I'm going to hold shift and then select that node as well. So I have two different nodes selected. And then when I go into set up time traffic light, you're going to see that the lights pop up for both sections. And this is where this is where you can actually have a lot of fun when it comes to trying to manage this traffic with the traffic lights and everything. Yes, it gets complicated, but it can be a lot of fun too. So the first step that we're going to add is, well, let's see. I want to allow, hmm. I want to allow, let's say this traffic here to go forward. And then I want to allow this traffic here to go forward and then that can turn right. Okay. That'll be that'll be my first one. And then I think I only want like 5 seconds and 10 seconds. So we'll add that on there. Now, in my second one, I want to be able to have, let's see, This is this is where it gets complicated. Um, <laughs> let's see. My second one, I want to be able to do. Hmm. 
Oh, I need to add a step. Make that turn left. That and that need to stop. I'm going to make that stop. And I'm going to go ahead and allow that to go. Yep. That'll work. And then we'll leave the time at 5 and 10. We'll add a step. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to stop that from going. Allow those to go. Keep that one green. And we'll leave it at, let's see, we'll take that up to 10 and 15 seconds. So we'll go ahead and start that and then we'll see how that works out. I think that, uh, I mean, you get the basic gist of it, right? You know, um, traffic as it comes off of here can go. We now have traffic coming down that way as traffic is trying was trying to turn left off of there, I think. Now I've got this light green and that green going forward, so traffic can just come off and go that way. And traffic can also turn right. Next section, we have traffic coming off of here and traffic coming off of here. And it doesn't really last for too long. It lasts for a maximum of 10 seconds. And since we have a huge traffic flow, then it did the maximum of 10 seconds. But as soon as it stopped, then the next node went off that traffic is coming off of there. <coughs> There's a little bit of a tailback issue happening here, but you know, then you can go in and you can adjust it as you want to and change everything out the way you want to as well. But you can see that that's really helping out with this tailback right here. It's really getting this cleared out. Now, if you wanted to, then you could even go into these traffic lights down here and change that out even more. Um, or if you wanted to, you could, I mean, you could take this node, that node, that one, and that one, and sync them all up together. That way, when one light is green, all of them are green all the way throughout, so it gets traffic moving through a lot better. It gets your throughput for the traffic done a lot quicker. All right, there's two more things that I want to touch on when it comes to the time traffic lights. So if you have something like this, all right, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, I need to get a time traffic light in here because of, I don't know, whatever reason that you might want. So when you go in here to this node and then you go to set up the time traffic light, you'll notice that there's a couple extra traffic lights that are in here. And that's because that is for the monorails. Believe it or not, the, <laughs> the monorails do, for some reason, interact with this junction. So what I want to do is you need to make sure to include these in your traffic making decisions. So if I want to go in here and I want to, uh, let's see, add a step to this junction, right? And I want to, let's change my mode down here. And I only want, say, people to turn right here as people are turning left. And then make sure that, let's see, let's change this mode to get to a different part of it. People can turn right there. And then people can turn left there. But what I have to make sure of is that this one is green and this one is green. Because if I don't do that, then any monorails that come across here as this um, traffic light is happening, then it will actually stop. So if I go into, let's see, I need to add one more step. And then after, say, those guys turn left, let's stop them from turning left and right. And then I'll let uh, everyone else go through, let's say. Let's do something like that. So we'll add that on there. Um, but if I forget to do these, let's see, I actually go into edit and then say I forget to do those then you can actually see where that stops and it actually stops the monorail from going through. Well, at least it did for a second. <laughs> it, it stopped it. But you just have to be mindful of your lights here. Now, granted, everything is turning yellow right now because I've got the uh, counters wrong. So let's go back in here. Let's go to edit minimum 10 seconds, maximum 15 seconds. 
So then we'll edit that and then 10 seconds and 15 seconds. Now, hopefully I can get, there's a monorail that's coming through now. Apparently that did nothing because I didn't start it. <laughs> that's my fault. Let's see if I can get, get one more to come through here. Here comes one. Which the light is green here, so that one's good to go. Now the light is turning red, so any monorail that tries to come through here now, which this one right here should stop. Yeah, see it stops, but there's no reason for it to stop. So that's where you have to kind of keep in mind of when you're doing stuff like this, you have to make sure you're taking into account the monorails. Now, the other thing that this is good for is actually you can, um, so if I select this node, when it, you have trams in here, the trams don't stay separate. The trams actually correspond with the traffic going around it. So you can have these going and we can add that step. And then the next step that we add in is going to be this one. So we can add that. We'll start it. And then that stops this one from going because these guys are going. And then once those turn red and those turn green, this will go along with the regular traffic. So just keep that in mind when it comes to doing your time traffic lights. Now, the other thing that you can also do if you have a really large train network is believe it or not, you can actually add a time traffic light in your train network. I mean, I don't know how conventional it would be to do that, but I don't know. It's possible that you could have such a large train network that trains are passing and crossing over so much that maybe you need something like this to, to help manage it. Who knows? Um, but it's just a thought, something that you could do. And then once you add that on there, if you no longer need it, then just click on remove time traffic light. And then if you have to add a junction onto there, you can click on add junction and then select the junction that you need. Now, say that you didn't end up doing this right. As you saw earlier, I went ahead and went into edit and then I edited everything that I needed to, clicked on save and went back in and started it back up. Pretty sure I have touched on everything. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and put it down in the comment section down below. I think that, uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. If you want to see the build of this city, there is a Let's Play series on it for Geminon Islands. And go ahead and check that out too. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you.